Hey everyone, welcome back to another Hardware News Recap for the week. We have some pretty big items this week, and one of those is a stream announcement that Joe Staponzi, the overclocker who's joined us in the past from Bearded Hardware, will be joining us this weekend on Friday through Monday. We're going to be streaming on Saturday and on Sunday. And then we also have news, of course, to talk about for the week, like Threadripper leaks, more of them. Asrocks 5700 XT Tai Chi X. This is a lot of, it's like the, the kind of username from 10 years ago going on there. Uh, 1660 rumors, actual news, AMD's RDNA Zen 2 and Zen 3 architectures and roadmaps have been updated. 6 gigahertz memory overclocking and more. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair's Hydro X water cooling series. Corsair Strength is bringing water cooling to the masses, and it has built out cooling solutions with industry leaders to help newcomers get into open-loop cooling. Corsair has fittings, adapters, GPU water blocks, CPU water blocks, pump res combos, and radiators all available in the Hydrax line. As you can see in our footage, these kits can be used to build beautiful open-loop systems. Learn more at the link in the description below. Starting off with the stream update, so Joe has joined us before. You may know him as basically the Viking god of overclocking. And in the past, we've done things like the... 9980XE overclocking. We did an AMD overclocking stream previously as well with the 2700X before the 3000 series came out. We've done a few different CPU and GPU overclocking streams, but now we're doing something special, which is combining AMD GPU and CPU into one overclocking session. Because in the past, we've done Intel and NVIDIA, we've done AMD CPU only, we've done Intel CPU only, and now it's time to do AMD and AMD since it's all new stuff for them. And uh, it should be pretty interesting, assuming things actually work. So Saturday is when we'll be streaming the first part. That's going to be likely, things might change here, but will likely be just one component. So probably just the CPU. And then Sunday, we're planning on doing the CPU and the GPU. So that'll be a 5700 XT, and it will be a 3900X most likely. We'll put them both under liquid nitrogen, see what kind of Scores we can achieve if it's possible to get any records with that combination. Uh, it's going to be tough, but should be a lot of fun. So make sure you check back. The stream plans are currently going to be for uh, 1 p.m. on Saturday start time and likely 1 p.m. on Sunday start time, and that is Eastern time. So if you're planning to watch, and you definitely should because it'll be a big streaming event, with a lot of overclocking, we'll have two LN2 pots going at the same time. It's the first time we've ever done that, a GN that is. Joe's got a lot of experience doing that, but first time we've ever done that on our channel. So uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time, that would be New York time, and uh, Saturday and Sunday, and those dates are going to be Saturday the 14th and Sunday the 15th. So check back for that, and uh, yeah, should be a lot of fun. Really looking forward to it. Threadripper. We received some follow-up information on Threadripper. Last week, we published a couple of tables that we had obtained through a new source to GN. And uh, the tables were, we modified them a bit to protect the source, but they came from an AMD official internal document. The document detailed some of Threadripper's next-gen preliminary specifications. It detailed some of the uh, thermal targets, stuff like that. And as a note here, going into the new information we got, this is a new source for us. But we have vetted the source that said it's important that we temper expectations as always because, uh, one, product's not out yet. We do try to avoid rumors in general, but this week does have quite a few of them because uh, they are, uh, they're starting to exit rumor status and enter probably true status. But anyway, time hasn't yet proven how accurate the data that comes from this particular source is. And uh, secondly, things could shuffle pre-launch anyway. But let's just talk about it for fun and kind of leave it there. So, firmly in the grain of salt territory for now, and then we can all look back at this uh, with Threadripper 3 launching and evaluate if it was accurate. We previously looked at AMD documents that detailed an STRX4 Threadripper HEDT CPU and an SWRX8 CPU, and those have quad and eight channel support respectively. So that was the interesting bit from last time. That stuff we are very confident on. It's, it's uh, I mean, that came from an AMD document, so unless they change something, that should be what it's going to be. Since then, we've learned that allegedly STRX4 will be four chiplets and uh, SWRX8 will be eight chiplets. We have also learned that the uh, CPU, the core counts should be 32 cores, obviously, on the STRX4 option. SWRX8 could 
go up to 64 in theory with eight chiplets. It just becomes a question of does AMD enable all of those or do they do something where they, they split them uh, to not eat the Epic market too much. It could just be failed Epic CPUs being binned into this new workstation class. But that's what it looks like for now. We'll see how it turns out. And let's move on to some actual news that's not a rumor. ASRock is planning to announce its RX 5700 XT Tai Chi X 8G OC Plus. So that is, let's see, one, two, that's got three Xs. That is decidedly more Xs than any other RX 5700 XT cards we have yet talked about. And uh, with a 33% increase in Xs, we can only assume that there's a linear translation into performance. So uh, that's what we're going to be looking at eventually. Either ASRock sending it or we're buying it. We want to look at the card. It's not... It's, it's probably not going to be particularly good value, but should be interesting to take apart and see how the performance is overall. This is supposed to be a flagship card. ASRock has been ramping its 5700X uh, efforts with the launch of the new series, and the new RX 5700XT Tai Chi X OC Plus will be ASRock's flagship, hosting a triple axial cooler with a classic Tai Chi obsession for LEDs dead center in a circle. Photos reveal that the card has dual BIOS with a silent OC and OC mode pre-installed, along with an LED on-off hard toggle on the top of the card if you really don't want LEDs and you also don't want to install software to control them. We actually like that. That's good. If ASRock's marketing images are realistic, it looks like it's running a fairly standard aluminum base plate for the memory, although the image doesn't show coverage on the MOSFETs, but that might be a separate piece that's been pulled away or it's a render. ASRock is... Uh, it is rendered, just to be clear. <laughs> ASRock is advertising the card as a 10 plus 1 design. And in its advertising of this 10 plus 1 design for the VRM, ASRock is using what is probably the world's stupidest marketing chart next to the Apple one that was shown recently. Yikes. The, uh, the ASRock chart shows simply two things. It says 10 plus 1 for their bar and then 7 plus 1 for the other bar. If you add those numbers, it would, be, it would be 11 and 8, respectively. And then uh, the x-axis is simply labeled power phase quantity. So a few things here. One, that's not how it works. More phases doesn't just straight mean more better. We don't doubt that this Tai Chi card probably is a pretty high on VRM. We, we haven't looked at it, so don't go pre-order it, but uh, it probably is. Even still, though, more phases doesn't mean more better. And if it did, this is an embarrassing way to advertise a product. The engineers probably absolutely hate it. But anyway, marketing aside, this will be among the most expensive 5700 XT units that will be coming out for this generation. And we plan to look at it. A quick side note here that's actually kind of interesting and worth discussion is that the 5700 series is apparently exciting enough for board partners that we're starting to see a lot more effort put into some of the higher end designs, the flagships, the Halo products, things that don't necessarily move volume and are often bad in terms of just straight value, but are really important to getting people excited about a product and then either they decide it's not good value or they can't afford it and they buy the next tier down from the same company. So that's a lot of the idea for those. But even further on also the overclocking topic earlier, seeing a bigger push for higher end products in a uh, in a new GPU launch means that we'll potentially have some more opportunities to do fun things, actually play around with the hardware, not just benchmark for games and move on. So this is not really a common thing for AMD. We haven't seen this for a few years. The RX 4 and 500 series did have good products out there, but there wasn't really a big focus on ultra high-end cards. So that's different with the 5700 XT. We have the Pulse coming out or rather the Nitro, the Pulse is already out, the Nitro uh, Plus coming out, and then this Tai Chi card. Asus has a high-end Strix as well. So it's, it's actually looking genuinely really interesting, this landscape for the 5700s. And I'll note as well that we kind of skipped the RTX series when we did our GPU reviews. We talked about them at launch, but we didn't do the follow-up of review every single model that comes out as fast as we can that we did for the 10 series. And that's because it just wasn't interesting enough. People fell off the views very quickly, and we reviewed the ones that came out initially and then stopped and moved on. 5700, we've been reviewing as many as we can, and it seems like people are genuinely interested in it in the audience. So it's, a, it's actually a big shift for AMD's perception and GPU in the market uh, from our perspective 
typically we don't see enough excitement to keep posting reviews of the same GPU with different cooler designs. But it's awesome to be able to do it because personally, I really like doing those kinds of benchmarks. So anyway, uh, let's move on. That was just some conjecture. Rumor here, we're peppering them throughout the content this time. GTX 1660 Super and 1650 Ti in the news again. Uh, rumors have surfaced this past week indicating that NVIDIA could be readying a GTX 1660 Super in conjunction with a 1650 Ti, both in presumable response to Andy's entry-level Navi cards, supposedly based on Navi 14 for the upcoming AMD ones. To be clear, that's not NVIDIA's new 1660 and 1650 Ti. Uh, they are not basing those on Navi. That would be really interesting. We'd like to review that. Uh, but in response to Navi's 14 counterpart that's allegedly coming out. So let's use that word again. The alleged GTX 1660 Super for its part would see the same TU-116-300 die from the original 1660 extended to the Super counterpart. And the card would come with a memory upgrade in the form of uh, allegedly six gigabytes of 14 gigabit per second GDDR6 memory. The current GTX 1660 boasts six gigabytes of eight gigabit per second GDDR5. The memory would still operate over a 192-bit interface, although the rumors don't explicitly mention it. We could also expect a bump in both core clock and boost clock, given that the Turing silicon has matured at this point. The same rumor also points to the 1650 Ti coming to market with up to 1152 CUDA cores, up from the 896 found on the current GTX 1650. As always, take the rumor with a grain of salt, although Nvidia trying to round out its low-end Turing offerings in fortification against AMD's looming cheaper Navi-based cards would certainly make sense. New slides from AMD made their way out onto the web recently, and they have more or less confirmed what we already knew. AMD's confirmed this a few different ways in the past. So the slides appear to be part of a larger corporate slide deck from a recent presentation. Regarding Zen, the slides show the 7 nanometer Zen 2 as, quote, shipping, obviously and the Zen 3 7 nanometer plus design as, quote, design complete. This reiterates the speculation that Zen 3, not to be confused with the 3000 series Ryzen CPUs, they're distinctly different, Zen 3 will likely be locked into 7 nanometer plus, going by the speculation now and by these slides. This isn't a huge surprise. The slides also show Zen 4 as, quote, in design and in the 2022 window for a potential launch. Moving over to RDNA, the GPU side of things, the slides indicate that AMD is moving further away from its GCN architecture and forging ahead with RDNA 2. Like Zen 3, RDNA 2 will arrive on the back of TSMC's 7 nanometer plus process node with EUV if all goes to plan as according, uh, according to these slides. AMD releases ABBA, a, a GSA, and a GSA version called ABBA. In our last Hardware News episode, we mentioned that AMD is working on this, on BIOS updates with a, well, working on the AGESA code for BIOS updates that motherboard manufacturers would implement and distribute. And then we tested it earlier this week, showing actual performance uplift and some of the frequency behavior fixed on our CPUs. The 3700X is definitely improved in our testing. The 3900X is more or less 25 megahertz offset from where it was before. It is hitting boost like the advertised boost occasionally. Uh, just to be really clear here, a few things. These boost frequencies, they don't hold on all core, first of all, because then it wouldn't be a special spec. Uh, and they don't hold on one core either, necessarily. That's not true for the 3600. So in our 3600 testing, when it came out, we saw that it does hold at the boost frequency basically constantly on at least one core. There was a Reddit thread where someone um, tried to point out to us that if it were uh, always holding that boost frequency, it wouldn't be boost, it would be base. That's wrong, actually, uh, although it's a great thing to say to get some internet points on Reddit. So one thing here, the, the fallacy there is that it's not about is it holding that frequency, it's about on how many cores is that holding that frequency. So we're not talking about holding that frequency on all core forever, because then, yes, that would be base. Talking about is it holding that frequency on one core, not just a specific core, but literally any one core out of all of them for the duration of the workload? The answer is uh, no, not really with our 3900X, but the 3600, 3600X, absolutely. 3700X is getting more in that direction now with this ABBA update. 
and the 3900X is the one that's struggling the most because, well, 46 is quite high and it is a higher core count part. So shouldn't really surprise anyone. Overall, we did see improvement though, and you should watch that content if you wanna learn more about that. And more importantly for this news item, one thing we didn't talk about with the Agisa update because we were focused on performance is that in addition to a more aggressive boosting algorithm, AMD also overhauled idle states with the latest Agisa microcode. And this is uh, information we didn't publish previously. AMD says that this should net lower voltage states while the CPU is idle. And also that there's a new activity filter to help filter out the processes that, uh, quote, cause intermittent OS and application background noise. This should help prevent some of the boost algorithm uh, overzealous response to workloads that we've seen where it doesn't really need to respond in such a way because of a pain from a logging application. And lastly, AMD is rolling out a new monitoring SDK, and this will allow for better monitoring and reporting of CPU behavior on the AMD Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. AMD notes that the uh, final BIOSes should arrive in about three weeks time, if you're wondering when you can get the one that we tested. Six gigahertz memory overclocking achieved. If previous records were any indication, the six gigahertz frequency threshold was bound to be crossed sooner or later. As of now, G-Skill can lay claim to that distinction. The new record was achieved by no other than accomplished overclocker Top PC and validated by HardwareBot. Top PC works at MSI and used an MSI MPG Z390i Gaming Edge AC motherboard paired with an i9-9900K. The DDR4 used to claim the 6016.8 MHz world record was G-Skill's own 8GB Trident Z Royal. And of course, it goes without saying that a generous amount of Allen 2 is used in this lab at MSI headquarters. The previous record was a 5.9 GHz overclock obtained by MSI and overclocker Kovan Yan back in August. And if you want to see some comparatively mediocre memory overclocking, you can check back this weekend for our streams. Gigabyte is launching a closed loop liquid cooler line. We should probably move on from there, but might as well read the rest of this one. If you thought the CLC market was already crowded, Gigabyte is launching its own now. Uh, Gigabyte is putting out an Aorus 240 millimeter CLC or closed loop liquid cooler. Some people call them AIOs. Gigabyte has previously dabbled in CPU cooling with its Aorus ATC 800 air cooler. The liquid cooler 240 will use a 240 radiator cooled by a pair of RGB illuminated 120 fans. The cooler will also feature a pump block design similar to that of the Asus ROG Ryujin in that it will have an LCD screen atop the pump block housing that can display temperature among other things. Supported sockets include AM4, 11.5X, 2066. The Aorus Liquid Cooler 240 is also compatible with the Asetek AMD TR4 retention kit, which we don't recommend using, and pricing and availability weren't disclosed. And as far as the TR4 kit, we previously did some tests. You can go dig them up on the site or on our YouTube channel, where the Asetek coolers, specifically because of the smaller cold plate, do struggle compared to something like a larger Noctua cooler with a full coverage plate on Threadripper CPUs. So don't bother. Just don't get it for Threadripper. Save everyone the time. Uh, Last one here, Navi could be headed to workstations, also another rumor, but uh, sort of in probably true status. Further fuel in Navi 14 speculation is the discovery of a new Navi 14 PCI ID in a Linux patch. The code within the patch adds the Navi 14 PCI IDs 0x7341 and 0x7347 respectively. In addition, the patch references a quote, workstation SKU in the patch message. We've also seen signs from past Linux drivers pointing to AMD revising Vegas Silicon for the rumored Arcturus compute card. And that'll cover it for this week. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one, one of our mod mats, tool kits, or other apparel. And you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out there as well. I'll see you all next time.